Hello, I'd like to tell you about SURE, which stands for Sustainable and Renewable Energy. SURE was set up as a community group in Wharfdale, West Yorkshire, to help people save money on their fuel bills. And we do this by highlighting cheap or even free ways to reduce the amount of energy that we use to heat and light our homes. The cost of fuel has been rising for several years and this has led to financial challenges for many of us. And we've all seen the effects of changing climate. It's a certain fact that reducing the amount of energy that we each use will help to prevent runaway climate change. Sure is now involved in a number of energy projects in the local area and we'd like to tell you more about one of them now. Otley is a town in North Wharfdale in West Yorkshire. There are many houses which are stone built 100 years old. This particular property has been empty for over 10 years and has been neglected having had no maintenance for 25 years. This has provided the new owner there with an opportunity to look at what appropriate energy efficiency measures would be suitable for the property. There is the proud owner of the property, what sort of aspirations do you have for its renovation? Right, well, it's a traditional Otley Terrace um, and we want it to remain as a traditional Otley Terrace, um, particularly from the outside. Um, but then on the inside, we want to make sure that it's got as much energy efficiency um, as it can have uh, within our budget. Right. And do you have a big budget for this? <laughs> Um, no, uh, the budget is flexible at the moment and it's really dependent on uh, the tender process um, and the other things that we need to do in this project, um, but um, there will be a substantial amount that we do want to earmark for energy efficiency, um, it's one of the key things that we'd like to see built in. And how do you intend to proceed then in terms of the renovation and considering energy efficiency matters? Right, well, um, we've appointed an architect um, and um, he's obviously going to advise us quite closely on what he considers to be the best options for us in terms of the budget and what we can manage to do in energy efficiency. Um, we've also obviously been in touch with uh, Shaw um, to tap into their expertise as well. architect for this renovation project, what sort of problems do you see in the property with energy efficiency? Uh, there's multiple problems in the property. Um, there's no insulation to the majority of the house, um, no insulation at all to any of the walls. There might be some insulation to the roof, but until we actually open up the ceilings, we don't know. Uh, single glazed windows, lots of gaps around the windows. Uh, we've got wind whistling through the house at the moment. We've got an inefficient heating system. Lots of the pipes are silted up, lots of the radiators are uh, silted up also. One of the uh, biggest issues with uh, old properties of this type is uh, air tightness and uh, we need to, uh, at the construction stage, ensure that all gaps uh, and any air leakage paths are filled, uh, such as underneath skirting boards, cracks between uh, floorboards, uh, sealing any, any gaps around any pipework, uh, also the, uh, the heating system in this house as you can see, it's very old, um, very inefficient, silted up pipes, no lighting to any of the pipes either. Um, so one of the first things to do is to, to upgrade the existing system and uh, make sure it's thoroughly insulated around all the pipes. We have uh, an unlighted immersion heater and hot water storage tank, which is very inefficient. Um, we also have unlighted uh, pipe work, which is losing heat. Um, to, the, uh, to the loft, we also have uh, an uninsulated uh, loft hatch which is losing heat and uh, there's also pipework penetration through the ceiling uh, causing air leakage. Once we start renovating uh, houses at this age and start removing the plaster work it is a requirement of the building regulations to substantially upgrade the thermal performance. Um, so what we'll do is we'll move the plaster work, insulate internally on the whole of the roof with up to 100 millimetres of, of insulation. We're also going to uh, seal, again, any gaps around windows uh, to ensure air tightness. And we're going to address issues of these old single glazed velox windows 
um, in fact reducing them inside slightly to make the house more thermally efficient and also to an, an upgraded glass panel in them. Nick, this looks to be a problem. What do you think has happened here? I think the issue we've got here is the, uh, the, the junction between the, uh, the mansard roof uh, and the lower roof section has actually failed. Uh, it might be a problem with the, uh, the lead work. Um, as part of the works, we're going to strip off the roof, uh, refelt it, uh, relay the slates, and that will stop uh, any moisture penetrating through. Um, there is significant damp build-up in this section of roof here. Um, one of the issues might also be the, the bathroom below, uh, warm air, moist air rising up, hitting the cold surface of the Velox window and uh, transferring moisture to this section of roof. Uh, on the ground floor as well, we also have issues with, uh, there's no damp proof course, so as part of the works we're going to inject a damp proof course into the ground floor walls, that will stop any rising damp issues. Um, the, uh, the, the issue out here as well with the damp is, uh, the, the, the issue with damp causes heat loss uh, through, the, uh, through the section of walls. So stopping the dampness, that will make the walls warmer? It will make the walls warmer, which will make the house warmer. So in my terrace house, what I've done under the floors is put some mineral wool insulation underneath the floorboards. What kind of treatment will you put here? Well, we're going to actually tackle two issues uh, with the ground floor. We're going to sort out problems with uh, air leakage and air tightness, and we're also going to sort out the issue with having no insulation underneath the floor. Um, we're firstly going to tackle the air tightness by lifting up the existing floorboards, overboarding the entire ground floor with a chipboard. Um, that will allow us a continuous air barrier or seal around any pipe works, around any floor, uh, sorry, any skirting boards, and uh, we will then relay the existing floorboards on top of it. This will you know, allow us to put some of the existing features back into the house. That will look nice. Yeah, yeah. Underneath the, uh, underneath the chipboard, we'll actually insulate between the joists. Um, there's various ways of insulating a, a floor of this type. We can use uh, sheep's wool, which is the most environmentally uh, sort of aware like product. British sheep's wool. Yeah, British yeah. sheep's wool. It is quite expensive, but uh, you know it's a green product, and we'll, we would prefer to use that type of material. Uh, there are other options. Um, a kingspan material, right. which is a rigid insulation uh, packed between the floor joists. Or alternatively, uh, a more economical method might be to put uh, a, a, a net between right. the uh, floor uh, joists, mineral wool. a mineral wool yeah. uh, between them. Yeah. We've now moved down the road to Rod Holt's house, a keen environmentalist, to see some of the energy efficiency measures that he's installed over the years. Rod, your house is very similar to Theo's. What sort of energy efficiency measures have you put in? Well, I've installed insulation on most of the outside walls. This is an example. In this particular instance, I've used Kingspan because I thought that would be most suitable in the bathroom. And it's visible here and also in the window reveals. And I've noticed outside that you've got some solar panels. That's right. The solar panels provide hot water for most of our requirements during the summer months, but obviously not very much during the winter months. And is that pump behind connected with the solar panel? The pump in the cupboard is part of the solar installation and that's run by its own PV panel which is located down the garden. It only pumps when the sun comes out. Well, when I came up the stairs, the light came on automatically without me even flicking the switch. Yes, that operated by a pressure pad under the stair carpet. As soon as you put a foot on the stairs, the lights come on and stay on for 20 seconds, which is long enough to get to the top of the stairs. And the same applies for going down again. And do these run off the solar power as well? Yes, they have a solar panel on the shed roof which charges a battery during the hours of daylight and there's easily enough capacity in the battery to provide illumination on the stairs and landing during all of the hours of darkness. <laughs>